Well, hello and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy with an update for our previous episode of Flat Earth Can't Science, specifically the Monterey Bay observation. As you may recall from that episode, we did have a couple of things that we looked at uh, concerning this observation across Monterey Bay, and there were a few other things that we wanted to follow up on. This is the follow-up video. In addition to dealing with those issues, I did want to correct a couple of small errors that were made, specifically uh, an observation height of the dunes of Lake Michigan toward Chicago, and the actual distance of the observation. We had some new information come in from a great video by Greater Sapien, and we're going to incorporate that as well. Now to recap this observation, this was a detection of a flashing mirror across Monterey Bay at a distance of 13.23 miles. The initial observation height was 25 feet, and that was brought down to as low as 4 feet. And the target on the other side of the bay was originally at about 15 feet and brought down to 4 or 5 feet as well. The experiment itself is very well documented by the team, and many of these images and videos come from that documentation. Now here is the money shot, as they call it. This is the flashing mirror detected at the horizon, 13.23 miles away. You can see the power plant at 14.5 miles in the background. Now using their most extreme measurement, which is a four-foot observation height and a four-foot target height, we should get, according to the curve calculator, approximately 61 to 62 feet of obstruction. Now the point of the first video was to show that if you could overcome this amount of obstruction on a globe Earth, it's not a proof of a flat Earth. To do that, we use this shot of a known superior mirage of the Chicago skyline from across Lake Michigan. We had a look at what type of obstruction we would be dealing with with 150-foot observation height and normal refraction at 59 miles for Chicago. Once we did that, we messed with the refraction a little bit, increasing it to the point that we got the amount of visibility that is demonstrated in the photograph. We then applied the same amount of refraction to the photograph across Monterey Bay to see what the resulting obstruction would be. As you can see, we were able to chew up quite a bit of it, but not eliminate it to the point that we could see all the way to the beach. At that point, Greater Sapien beat me to the punch and actually looked at the actual amount of obstruction that was visible in the video. Now the power plant in the background of those flashes is noted in this frame from the video on the left. Now looking at the photograph on the right, which was taken of approximately the same angle of this power plant at a much closer distance, we can match up the structures in the two photos. It is very clear that we are missing quite a bit from the bottom part of the photograph on the right. The white line marks the horizon. You can also see the yellow lines matching up structures in the photograph of the video and the photograph of the power plant. Since the power plant itself is built 33 feet above sea level, that's the base of the power plant. We are missing at least 35 to 40 feet of the bottom of that photograph, which is obstructed by the horizon. Now, I suggest that you have a look at Greater Sapien's video. He has got cars moving along a road that is 30 feet above sea level, right above the flash of that mirror. I wanted to include that for two reasons, uh, but the photographs were simply too grainy. The first reason is to show that the flash is almost at the level of that 40-foot road, and the second was to show that the flash is almost as large as a car on that 40-foot road. Now, the size of that flash is extremely important, and I would recommend you have a look at Greater Sapien's video to see it. Much like a flashlight beam expands with distance, the flash of the sun in a mirror will likewise expand out in a cone of light. The fact that the flash is nearly the size of a car from a mirror no more than three and a half feet wide suggests that it has traveled a distance from its origin and expanded. Getting into the meat of this video, we need to talk about the refraction of light and reasons that that signal mirror, which was on the beach, was seen despite the fact there was 35 foot of demonstrated obstruction. Like the Chicago skyline observation, we are seeing a temperature inversion on Monterey Bay. It's not to that extent, but it is obviously present. This is apparent for two reasons. The first is that we are missing some of the obstruction predicted by the curve calculator with normal refraction. We're actually getting less than would be expected. The second reason is equally apparent, and that is the fact that the flash is appearing nearly on the level of the 40-foot above sea level road. 
Rather than suggesting they falsified their mirror height, this strongly suggests that a refraction was bending that light upward and then down towards the observer 13.23 miles away. Let's have a look at an experiment. This is a cylinder with three different colors of clay on it. Now we place this clay cylinder with the three colors behind this bottle, and as you see, only the green is visible. The red clay is clearly behind the curve of the bottle. Now we take a little liquid butane, which not only is quite cold, but a little denser than air, and set up a temperature inversion over that bottle. You see how the red pops up? Let's have a look again with a little more butane on that bottle and see how that red comes out. That's the red reflected off of that red clay being curved around the rim of that bottle. Much like things can be curved over the horizon on the earth with a temperature inversion. Now as the liquid butane is put on to the relatively warm bottle, it boils off causing spray in addition to dense butane and cold air. This is analogous to a warm day with warm air over a cold ocean that has breaking waves and mist along its surface. Now, when you start doing flashes of light or lasers across rough water, especially if that water is cool, with a small layer of cool air above it with warm air on top of that, you have the breaking of the waves putting mist and water droplets into the air. The laser or the flashes of light will catch these droplets and cause a flash. Now here is a similar experiment where we have a bright light behind that same bottle. As you can see, the angle of the camera is that the light itself is hidden. But now let's add some butane to the top of the bottle. We have the light arcing around in the refraction and we also have it bouncing off the boiling liquid butane. The video across Monterey Bay is very suggestive of this type of a process with refraction and droplets of water in the air. Once again, as asserted in the previous video, the Earth is a sphere. That is the current model. That is what the evidence supports. If there is going to be an effort to prove that the Earth is indeed flat in the face of this evidence, we need to be able to show any observation first cannot occur on a spherical Earth. That has not been done in this case, and therefore this is not a proof of the flat Earth.